Today on TQA Weekly, I demonstrate how to connect to a NAS drive using Ubuntu 12.10. This is TQA Weekly. I'm your host, Steve Smith, aka Z Axis, and yes, you may call me that. And TQA stands for Technology Questions Answered. So if you ever have any questions, comments, suggestions, and or stories, they can be technology horror stories if you want, email me at ask at tqaweekly.com. So what is the most important part of your computer, laptop, tablet, cell phone, and any other amazing console or other gadget you have in your house or in your pockets. It's the storage. Hard drives, whether flash drives or the traditional spinning drives, have a problem. They fail. And they have an extra problem. They're accessible by the machine they're connected to. Unless you're using shared folders or doing other crazy stuff to make it compatible or accessible to other devices, in which some cases you can't, there is nothing you can really do about the internal storage of those devices. Ubuntu, Apple, and Windows allow you to have shared folders that can be accessible through various machines, but compatibility still stays a primary issue that may cause problems for you down the line. So there is only one real way to make data, whether it be documents, photos, videos, or anything else accessible to every single one of your gadgets, irregardless of operating system or type of device. The solution for this issue is a NAS drive. For demonstration purposes, we purchased a DNS 325 from D-Link. I use a D-Link Router, and if you ever followed my other shows, you know that staying with the same company for all your radio antennas for your wireless, your router, and other gadgets connected to the network will ensure the maximum compatibility of all your devices. But needless to say, this is not really as important for the NAS drive. It's better, but it's not as important. Now, it has a two bay storage system which means it can accept two hard drives you can go up to four in these things and i want you to keep something extremely clear in your mind when you go to buy a nas drive in your favorite computer store nas drive it has to be connectable to the network simply getting a usb version of this device will not ensure the maximum compatibility of this to other machines and will force you to make a shared folder this is not what you want. You want this to be accessible to every single computer, irregardless of whether your computer is on or off. So, devices such as the DNS325 from D-Link are what you are more interested in buying when you're trying to augment storage and maintain compatibility through all your device's operating systems. So for today, I'm going to be showing you how to connect such a NAS drive or network attached storage device to your Ubuntu 12.10. And it's a lot easier than you may have imagined before. So how about we get to that demonstration? So starting from the desktop of Ubuntu 12.10, and of course, we are using the D-Link DNS325. All you need to do to mount it is start from the home folder Go under network where it says browse networks click upon this select the NAS drive as you have named it I named it DNS 325 for obvious reasons select the folder you'd wish to mount right click it and then select mount of course for anybody who does this restarts the computer and sees the mount is gone this is only temporary a more permanent way of making this mounted is by right clicking it once it's mounted and adding a bookmark. You can, of course, rename the bookmark to anything that you may find more simple for you to find. So I'll rename it to DNS325. 
The next time you open your computer and the mount at the bottom is gone, click on your bookmark, it will auto mount the drive and it bring you straight to this folder or any other folder that you have selected. So just a few pointers. I do not have UPnP on on my router like I explained to you last week. There is so much that can go wrong leaving UPnP on because it's just not good for us. So you saw this machine works without having UPnP on, universal plug and play, and it works great. Connecting to my PS3 with no problems, to my tablets, to my cell phones, to my laptops and desktops as you can see around me. There is no issue whatsoever connecting this device if you were to leave various options off in your router as you should. Of course, it is compatible with every single operating system where there is software for it to be used. So obviously it will work with your Macs, it will work with Windows and it will work with Linux. If you're using various things like, I don't know, iPhones and iPads and all that, our specific company that we're using, D-Link, has software that makes it work on those devices and it can be accessible outside the house as its own cloud drive. So you have your miniaturized version of a Dropbox accessible to you everywhere. No more lugging around heavy hard drives to show your family photos from your vacation. You can just connect to your cloud drive and have access to every single one of your photos instead of having to pick and choose which ones you want to show people. So, of course, let's talk about what I'm going to do next week. Next week, I'm going to be talking about Windows 7 and Vista. Of course, it didn't exist in XP. And I'm going to be specifically talking about the Windows Backup Service. So, what is it? How do you use it? And how do we incorporate the NAS drive that we just installed in our network to it to maintain a backup? So, until next week, like, share, and subscribe to this episode if you were interested in today's topic, learned anything from it, want to share it with your friends, and want to continue learning with me. You can always head over to tqaweekly.com for the latest subscription information so that you can see me via iTunes, YouTube, blip.tv, or anywhere else on the internet. And of course, I do have a weekly newsletter, very short basically a post of when I put up my latest episode so you never miss an episode of TQA Weekly. And of course, stay safe and online and have a great day. Goodbye.